morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeanette, and I'll be your instructor for today. Um, you've joined us for the SAGE 300 CRE a Payroll Quarterly Review. So we're going to be talking specifically about payroll and some steps and reports and things you need to do to uh, have a successful uh, quarter end. For our agenda today, uh, we're going to talk about some things uh, before you start <clears throat> processing the quarter end, some things you need to be aware of. Uh, then we're going to take a look at the tax preparation reports. I'll, I'll get into the software and walk you through some of the reports you need to be aware of. We will uh, talk about some common causes for differences. So what to look for if the reports don't come out the way that you think that they should. I'm going to walk you through how to recalculate the subject to amounts um, on your uh, employees. We'll talk about some error correction. Um, and then we're actually going to, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit in Atrix. So showing you how to launch that program uh, and how to print some of the, uh, the quarterly reports. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about is making sure that you have all of your information posted uh, in and posted within payroll. So verifying that everything for the quarter is in. Uh, you need to make a backup of your payroll files. And then you should uh, be kind of keeping track of what current version you're on inside the software. So let's jump into the software for a second. And I want to show you um, all three of these things before we go further into the quarter end. All right, so verifying that everything has posted in the system, the, the quick way to do that is to go into inquiry, check information, check activity. And actually, this inquiry is going to be your troubleshooting um, tool, actually, in all of payroll. Whenever you're looking for something that doesn't look exactly right and you want to look at the checks or the check that might be causing the problem, this is the inquiry that you're going to use. When you click on that, it's going to ask you which file you want to look at. Uh, and to verify that everything has been posted through correctly for the quarter, you want to look at the new file. And when you click OK on that, it's going to show you anything in that new file that has not been posted yet. And what you want to make sure of is the stuff that's in there, you want to make sure that, and actually, that's not going to help me. You want to make sure that the period end dates on those records uh, correspond to checks that are either outside of that quarter or beyond. Anything that is sitting in this new file that has a check status of printed or even processed, and it's got a period end date that falls in the quarter, you need to research that and get that check um, either fully processed and printed and then posted, or you need to go ahead and delete it out of here so it's not um, sitting in this, in this new file and always causing you confusion. Now, to get something out of the new file that has a status of new, the way you're going to do that is to go into Tasks, Enter Checks, use any of the views, click OK, put in the employee, put in the period end date, have it bring the check up on the screen, then you can click Cancel Check, and when you do that, the button to delete the check becomes activated. Now, this is only going to work on checks that have a status of new or altered um, or, or processed. Anything in the new file that says printed that hasn't been posted yet, you're going to have to void that. So once you delete, it's going to ask if you want to delete the check. Say yes. And then we'll go back into inquiry, check information, check activity. Again, looking at the new file, and that check is now gone from the list. Okay. All right, so first thing, make sure everything is posted through that you need for the quarter. Next thing, make a backup. And for those of you that are new to SAGE or uh, haven't 
use the backup tools inside the SAGE software. Uh, under Tools, you will see an option down towards the bottom called File Tools. And this is what you're going to use to make a backup of two important files before you do anything with the quarter or you um, close the month and move out of the quarter. Leave the bullet at Backup. Use the Add Files option. Select the Master PRM. Use Add Files a second time. Find the current.prt. And you can actually start typing in the name of the file at the, um, down at the bottom. And it will give you a list of those files. So we'll grab the current.prt. Those are the two important files. Click Next. I would go ahead and just put this out on your desktop uh, for the, the person that's actually doing the backup, and then call it uh, PR, whichever quarter it is, first, second, third, fourth, and just uh, call it first quarter backup. And then you can next all the way through. Make sure you have green lights going. And then next. And all the way through, it makes a backup. So if anything goes wrong during our, our quarter and month end, we have a backup that we can go to immediately and restore. The third thing is to check your version of, of, uh, that you've got, of Sage that you've got installed. And to do that, in, inside any application, you can always go to help about that application, and it will bring up a window that will show you what version you're sitting on. Okay. Now, the two supported versions right now are 17.1 and 18.1. Um, I would make sure that you're on the two most current versions during the year so that when you get to the end of the year, you won't have to scramble to do an up uh, an upgrade to get on the most current version supported for year end. During the year, you can be actually, even if you're back on version 16, um, which you shouldn't be because uh, 17 and 18, which was what was supported at year end. But if you're, if you're still farther back, those versions will actually, you should still be able to run your, your quarter end. And when you get to year end, I would almost guarantee you that there will be a version 19, and the versions that will be supported at year end will be 18 and 19. So usually that's how it works, is that a new version comes out at year end, and then we support that version plus one version backwards. Right. So that's how you check your version. Again, any application, help, about, will we'll give you that screen. I'm going to actually stay in the software. In your handout, there is a screenshot on page two um, that shows this first report that we're going to take a look at. So under re the reports drop down, under tax preparation, and actually this is, again, for quarter end, this is where you're going to focus your main attention to um, as far as running reports for the quarter end. There is a 941 preparation report already here on the, on the menu. So you can run this either by check date, which is the default, or period end date. But, you know, payroll is pretty much the accounting date is the check date, so you probably won't change that. But it's if you need to for other reporting uh, values, you can. You'll put your starting date in, which will be the 1st of January for the first quarter. Uh, your to date will be the end of the quarter. Wrong. And then from right here, you can print, or you can do a print preview, and it will show you the report that's at the bottom or underneath the screenshot, again, on page two. So this gives you, gives you a breakdown. It actually gives you a breakdown by check, and it shows you the different uh, taxes uh, subject to and tax amounts for each of the, of the federal taxes. 
For those of you that need to supply an employee count on page three, again, if you take a look at uh, reports, tax preparation, there is a quarterly employee count. You would put in your state, the quarter, the year, and then if you do a print preview, it will show you the, um, the report that you see at the bottom of page three. And there'll be totals at the bottom of that. So if any of your quarterly reports require that count, you'll be able to supply that by running this report first. Now the other set of reports that will be important for you is to run, again, run reports, tax preparation, and your subject to uh, reports. Well, we've got a couple of different um, reports that you'll want to run depending on where you are in the year. If you are still in the current quarter, meaning you haven't closed the month, you're, you're still, your master file is still sitting in March, you can run subject to for employee and employer, uh, and it will give you the current year and the current quarter. I've kind of messed around with the, with the data here. So there's a sample on the, at the top of page four for you. This is the employee subject to report. It's going to show you, uh, and it, actually let me run this uh, ranges and I'll just do the top two guys so we see, we don't see all the blank people. So, <clears throat> so it's gonna run through each of the, of the federal taxes let me zoom in on this a bit so that you can see how it breaks down each tax, tax uh, shows the employee's ID, name, and then it breaks down year to date, quarter to date, and month to date. There's actually columns going across. It shows all three. All right, so this would be the current quarter. You have a report for the employee as well as the employer. Just run those two people. Okay. And again, it's breaking it down by employer tax this time, giving you a list for each tax, a list of employees, and again, showing you their gross, their taxable, their subject to, and the tax amount. Now, if you've already closed the month and you're into April, you're going to want to use the prior period subject to employee and employer. This is going to go back and show you the prior quarter information. Now, it actually does go back and show prior year, prior, and prior month. Um, but what your focus is is the quarterly information. I can show you if I if we look at this. Let me again pull these top two people. The year to date information is not valid for you because what you're focused on is the prior quarter. Okay, so you'll ignore prior year. Prior quarter will show you the first quarter for 2019, and prior month would show you March. So you have that again for both employee and employer. The other one that you have, which might be, be you might want to run it instead of the prior period, if you've moved on to, uh, to April, you can run this by a date range. And it runs off the transaction file instead of the master file. So you would use uh, the current, you have a choice when you run it to be either by employee or employer taxes. You'll put the check date range in. And I'm gonna just pick the top two people again. And this again will give you, uh, by tax, it'll give you the amounts. Okay. 
So multiple ways, again, to run these reports under the tax preparation uh, dropdown. Now, what happens if you run these reports and the amounts that are showing up, the subject to taxable and tax amounts, are not correct? Okay. First thing, again, to check, make sure you look at the new file and make sure that everything has posted through. The next thing that you want to, uh, to check on, and I'm going to stay in the software for this again, is the setups on your deductions and your pays. The first thing I would look for is any new deduction that you've created. Typically, it's going to be the ones that uh, need to have some sort of exemption status, like a 401k, where you've created the ID and you've started um, uh, processing it on the employees, but somehow these checkboxes down here at the bottom are marked incorrectly. So where it says before employee taxes and before employer taxes, what that means is take out this deduction before you calculate those values, before you calculate the taxes, and before you, you calculate the subject to and taxable amounts or, or values for the master file. So these checkboxes either are not marked or they're marked incorrectly. So that's the first thing to check, is go through your list of deductions, make sure anything that is exempt has been marked correctly. The other one to check is pays. Any pays that you have that are also marked incorrectly. So any new pay ID that you've set up that you didn't check the boxes, maybe they were exempt from federal and state withholding, and you forgot to check that. Or the employer was ex is exempt from uh, unemployment or, this, or, the, or the federal or state unemployment. So anything in there that needs to be um, double checked. Okay. Right. The next thing to check is if it's a tax that's incorrect, uh, double check on the employee's setup, and this is at the top of page five in your handout. Double check on the taxes button that your adjustments are set correctly. Now you may have an employee who has asked for no federal withholding. However, the subject to and the taxable amounts should be showing up on the reports, just, just no tax. And so what you may have done is come in here under the adjustment method, and you may have marked them as exempt. Now, there's a difference between exempt and no tax. Exempt means don't calculate any taxes, and at the same time, do not accumulate subject to or taxable wages for this tax. Um, so if this person is not to show up on any of your quarterly forms or does not get a W-2, then exempt is the correct um, option. But if they're supposed to show up with their total wages on the reports and receive a W-2 at year end, you need to set them to no tax. No tax means do not calculate a tax, but I want you to accumulate subject to, and taxable on this employee's record. Now, if you make a mistake and you mark them as exempt, you can always come back and change them to no tax. And I'm going to show you in a moment how to fix uh, the columns. The columns that we're talking about here, yep, the columns that we're talking about here are year-to-date taxable, this column right here, and year-to-date subject to, um, as well as quarter. The, it, it's all of the subject to and taxable uh, values for that tax within the, uh, the tax uh, button. Okay, I'm going to change this back. Okay. okay. Now, another problem. Uh, this is the second screenshot on page five of your handout. 
is, is the tax itself. Uh, you need to remember that uh, SAGE does not update your unemployment, your state unemployment taxes. So at the beginning of each year, you need to come in and change the percent, and you need to update the limit if those have changed. So at any point during the year, if this is last year's limit, um, and it hits it, and it's supposed to, to do tax beyond that, it will stop. So it's going to stop at whatever this limit is right here. And again, uh, we can correct that. You correct the limit um, and save it. And then next, I'm going to show you how to correct both of these issues. The employee, uh, actually all three. So the, the exempt status has been changed, or the employee tax adjustment method has been changed, or the limit um, on one of your state taxes has been changed. So how do we correct those uh, subject to and taxable fields in the master file? This is on page six in your handout. Under tools, you have an option called recalculate subject to. Depending on where you are in the year, um, you're either going to run this on the current file or the history file. So if you're trying to correct something maybe from last year, the last year fields, um, you would select history. But if it's the current year that you're in, you need just to leave it at current. The year to recalculate is going to default to the current year. If you're trying to uh, uh, correct a prior year, values, maybe you're in, you need to correct the fourth quarter of last year because you're needing to rerun some reports, you would select prior year. But for a current year correction, leave the bullet at current year. And then you want to check this box here, clear taxable and subject to period totals. If you forget and you click the start button, when this is done, it will have doubled the amounts in subject to and taxable. Okay. Don't panic because you can run it, you can run this program as many times as you need to, and every time you'll have the option to clear the taxable and subject to period totals. So you just run it again, check the box this time, and then it'll it'll do it'll run and it will repopulate uh, those buckets. Now what it's doing when you run this program is it's looking at every check that's in the current file dated for the current year. It's looking at the setup for the deductions and the pays and the employee and the taxes. And it's recalculating the subject to and taxable values on each of those checks. It's also setting a status flag on the items, the deductions and the pays that have been changed to non-taxable. Okay. And then when it's done, it rebuilds those values inside your master file. So your, your current file is very, uh, very important here. And again, as a, as a note, and I want you to, to uh, highlight on page six, that middle paragraph at the bottom, where it says software will repopulate those fields with amounts from the checks. And, and then additionally, taxes, fringes, pays change to non-taxable. It marks those records. It's only doing the taxable and subject to fields. The tax itself is not being changed. So in order to change the tax amount, we have to go in and do it with a dummy check inside um, tasks, enter checks. So I don't have a screenshot of this in your handout, but I want to show you. Uh, let's say we had an incorrect uh, tax percent and we need to change our unemployment amount on an, on an employee. If we go into enter checks, and we can use, again, any view uh, will be okay. 
And I'll just do this for the third quarter. And I'll put in my person. And my period end date can be the same. Okay. I'm not going to put any time in here. I'm not going to put any taxes, deducts, or fringes in here. But I am going to go down using the tax button. I'm going to get down into that tax box. And I'm going to flip over to the employer tax. And here, I can put in my tax ID. I can either type it in or use the list button. And here, I can put the amount in. I can put a negative or a positive number. This amount is not going to create a, a, an actual payment to the employee. All we're doing here is correcting the tax amount. So if I need to reduce, I can put in a negative number. And it will take it. I go to the Check Info button. The net no direct deposit is here. And I can actually uh, process this. Oh, I know. One person has some missing formulas. Notice again, nothing pops in here. If I look at the Check Info again, it's still net of, is blank. Deposit is blank. I, I do see my negative $5. I can click the manual button, because we're not actually producing a check. We're doing a dummy manual check to correct the tax amount. So here I can do a, uh, let's make up a check number here. And I want it to post in that quarter. So I use a check date within that quarter. And I can OK that. And then I can accept it. And now I can, I can post that, and it will actually update the tax itself on this employee. So dummy, dummy check to change the tax itself. Recalculate subject to to change the subject to and taxable values. Now, if you have something that uh, a check that was that's sitting in that current file um, and it, it was posted, you never got around to voiding it. Uh, you do need to come back before you run your, your, your Atrix quarterly reports, and you need to void that check out of there using tasks void checks. Um, you need to know that uh, because Atrix is how you're going to be creating all of these quarterly reports, Atrix is actually using the checks in your current file to create those values um, that show up on the, uh, the reports. So you need to be sure that all of your uh, amounts that you need reported through Atrix, that they all exist on checks that reside in the current file. Now, to void something, you can void from any of the uh, transaction files that are out there. And what I wanted to just show, and I think I better find a check here. And I don't. And let me condition that. I'm hoping I've got more than one check sitting out here. I don't. So I'm not. Well, I will show you the, the screen, but I'm not going to actually void this. So period end date is 1, 7, 16. OK. OK. So once you pull the check up and you click the void button, this is the, the box I wanted to show you that's on page 7 in your handout. When you're voiding checks, it will default to retain this check as new, which means 
it's going to set it back up in the new file with a status of new so that you can make corrections to it, reprocess it, reprint it, and repost it. If this check does not belong here and you want to adjust the totals in the master file plus remove the check from the current file so it doesn't get included in the quarterly reports, you'll uncheck retain this check as new. And then it defaults to use original accounting date. This is the date that it's going to use to update um, general ledger and job cost. If you need to use a different date, if this is an old check and you want to be able to control what month it populates in GL and job cost, you need to uncheck that as well. The use original check date is for payroll itself. It's going to default to the system date if you don't check this box. Otherwise, if you leave it unchecked, you can control where this check gets voided in the system. So again, you need to be careful that you are voiding it either in the, the quarter that you're going to re be reporting on or you're going to void it in the new quarter. So just be careful with this um, box when it comes up when you're voiding a check because it you're not only controlling whether or not you're going to use this check over again, but you're controlling where the void is going to post and where the check, the void of the check is going to post. Cancel that. All right. The um, Next step then, after we have everything updated, corrected, recalculated, um, and then we've run the reports again to make sure that the values on the 941 and the subject to reports are correct, the next step is to go in and run our quarterly reports. So under tasks, you have two. You have the state and the federal. Now you can run Atrix and, and just print the forms and not do the e-filing. Um, if you want to e-file on your own, that's okay. Uh, the e-file itself, there is a charge for that, but running the report through Atrix, printing the reports, is free. So it'll be up to you to decide how you want to do that. Um, Atrix does have some packages for Processing during the year, depending on the number of employees, you can set, you can sign up for one of those packages, and uh, it might be beneficial to let them go ahead and do all the uh, the filing for you. They can even make your tax deposits if you want them to. All right. If you haven't been into Atrix or if you're new to Sage, um, it's going to come up and tell you that there's an update. Um, so you have a prompt here to, to update now. I'm going to go ahead and run this so you can see what it, what it does. It actually updates all 52 states uh, and all the federal. Okay, so I'm going to do an automatic. Okay, so even if you're only running payroll in one state, it will actually check all 52 locations, and if there is a change to any of those states, state forms or federal forms, it's going to prompt you to do an update. So it runs through, and it's verifying. It knows there's at least one out there, and so it's compiling a list. This can take a bit. I don't remember the last time I ran it on this machine. Okay, So you'll get a list of the forms uh, first, and then you click the Next button, and it'll go through and start updating. Now, once it does it, either at the state or the federal um, option under Tasks, uh, you don't have to run it for each. Just You just only have to run it the one time. And if when you make the connection, if it doesn't see that anything has been changed, it'll jump right into the, into the software. Once it's gone through and updated your machine, you'll see this message, and then you click Close, and it takes you right back to the, to the payroll screen. And then now when I come in to the state, I'll do the state first. It's, again, it's checking, and it sees, whoop, everything is updated currently, so it's going to come in to the software. And let's see, 
So now um, that uh, that update screen is on page eight in your handout, and what it looks like once it gets a list of forms is at the top of page nine. So this window um, is asking me if I want to uh, start a new report, which is the default, or if I want to rerun one of my previous reports that I've run. So this is a new, I'm gonna click next. You'll select the state off the dropdown. Once you select it, select it, it'll hold it. So if you only do one state, um, after the first time you run the state form, every time you come back in, it should automatically pop back into the, to the state that you're in. And then you just select the, the quarterly uh, report form off the list that shows up for your state. The period, because it's looking at my SAGE 300 data, it knows that I'm still in the first quarter. My master file is still sitting in March, so it populates with the correct quarter. If you've already moved on, if, you're, if this pops up and says second quarter, just click, use the drop down to bring it back to the first quarter. The year should be your current year. And hit your next button. It goes out and brings up, and actually selects all of your employees. Um, I'm gonna unselect and only pick the one, so that, because I know I just have the one guy that worked, has worked so far in 2019. Uh, for you all, if you don't want all of the employees, or if not all your employees have worked uh, so far this year, you can again unselect them, you select none, and then go down the list and just put a check mark next to, on each employee that you want included in the report. Click your next button and then click generate. Takes a minute. Depending on the form, it will take a minute for it to compile. It's also looking through the checks in your current file to find the checks that, that match up. No. Okay. okay. Now, you'll get this message here. I leave mine on. Uh, you can turn this message off with the checkbox down here at the bottom, uh, but it's nice to have this little prompt here that says, hey, be sure you look through and edit this report and print yourself a copy. Okay, That's telling me here that I've got some things in red that I need to uh, correct. So I just click OK. And it warns me again, fix the stuff in the red. Right. And then I need to go ahead and put in the values. So here, it looks like I didn't pay anything. Even if it's zero, you need to type the zero in the red. And if I prepaid this one, so I can set that up. And then again, you need to come down and correct the, anything in red needs to be corrected. Yep, yep, my sample data is a little sparse here. Now, if your report has more than one page to the form, you'll see this up here at the top in the top right corner, oh, excuse me, left corner. Use the arrows to toggle between the pages. And again, take a look and see if there's anything on the pages that you need to correct. Then you can hit the save button and, and then print. And then um, if you are e-filing, it will take you forward and actually I'm, I'm not going to e-file for Sage Construction sample, sample data, so I'm not going to go forward with that. I'll just uh, point out to you on page 13 in your handout, you'll see the um, 
the option to e-file. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. I need to move this down a bit. I think. Oops. Okay. All right, and then let's take a look at the 941. So your federal quarterly report. So again, it didn't prompt me to update because I had updated both the federal and the state. So I just started a new form. So I'm going to come down to the 2019 forms. And I'm going to select this one uh, to, for my quarterly federal tax return. Period again, first quarter, year 2019. It, it has populated that based on my um, uh, Sage 300 data. So here I can just go ahead and hit the next button. Again, it brings up all my employees. I'm going to go ahead and just pick the one guy. And I'm going to generate. So this is coming up because it thinks there's something in the new file that might be that I might need. So if you get this message and everything in your new file is has been posted through for the current uh, for the quarter, just say no here. Okay. Again, I'm, I've got that little steps there. I'm just going to click OK on here and fix the stuff in the red. Okay. So again, I'm seeing the top part is all good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put my deposit in here because I've prepaid all of that. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to the second page. I need to check. Okay, fine. Check that. And there's a bunch of stuff in here that needs to be filled in, but I think you can see okay, the form here. Okay, what are we saying? talking about here. This is that since new. It all looks right to me. Let's see if I can get down to the no, there's nothing on back on this page that I need to do. What do you want? Line seven. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but we'll put something in there. Okay. Oh, it's this difference right here, the difference between this. Maybe I put the wrong wrong number in there or not. All right. Okay. So here, if you get this, you just need to look at the totals here to make sure that um, you'll need to put something in the in the rounding column for the difference in the cents. Okay. All right. Then again, here at the top, you can print, you save. Print, and then if you go next step, you'll get to the e-file button again. Um, if you are, um, if you're doing that, okay. And again, a reminding reminder again: printing the forms is free. 
And so if you are just filing the, the forms yourself, um, you can print. And, and then when you get to that window, uh, you can go ahead and cancel out. Uh, save the report though first so you have a copy of the saved report within the within the SAGE data. Okay. All right. So let me go back through the, the PowerPoint here. Some of the screenshots are in the PowerPoint that you also have. Uh, that was part of the attachments that you received for the class. Um, so we've got the employee setup, the deduction setup, we've got the tax rate setup that we looked at. Um, again, I didn't point this out as we were going through the tax changes. Uh, just be aware that the Social Security and Medicare taxes are self-adjusting, which means that it will, um, every time you process a payroll, it will calculate those taxes um, and make up the difference if, um, if there is one. So if you did a manual check and you didn't calculate those taxes correctly, it will correct itself when you do the next computer generated check. So you, there shouldn't be any need for you to correct Social Security or Medicare taxes. Right. We talked about the recalculate, uh, recalculate subject two uh, and what happens to the data. You can run this on your history file. Um, I think that's good. Um, we looked at the screen. We talked about voiding checks. Um, now you can do manual adjustments, but I think you should talk to either SAGE support or uh, your consultant before you, do, you turn on audit setup activity and make any manual changes. Because again, keep in mind that Atrix uses the check records to generate um, a lot of this information that prints on these forms. Okay, We're, we've come to the end of our quarter review for payroll. Uh, so just some uh, tips and reminders. Again, making sure that everything has been posted for the quarter. Uh, the reminder about the, um, the, the current version of Sage 300, I would be checking that during the year so that when you get to the end of the year, you're not in a crunch situation where you are being forced to upgrade. A year end is always a hard time to have to, to, have to do that. So if you can do it prior to that, uh, that will be that will be a benefit to you. Um, and then again, make sure you have a good backup of your master files, uh, your master file and your current file at quarter end. So you want to make that backup that that I demonstrated to you uh, before you run any before you run month end and move to the next quarter. Uh, I would do the backup if you make any changes uh, to any. Values. If you'd have to rerun the uh, recalculate subject two, I would make your backup after that's all done. So after everything balances for the quarter, then make your backup, run your quarterly reports, close your month into the into the new quarter. Okay. So we have a little bit of time left. So if you have any questions about what we've talked about, or if you want me to go back and review anything that we looked at, if you want to go ahead and type in your question in the, the GoToWeb webinar uh, chat panel, Tina can read those to me, and, uh, and I'll, I'll answer for you. If you can't think of anything right now, you can always email Tina with your questions after the class. And show forward those to me, and I'll be happy to, to answer any questions that you think of later as well. Hey, hi. Wow, okay. not, seeing, not seeing any uh, questions yet. Okay. Let's wait for just a, a minute or two. Give everybody a chance to type stuff in if they have any. Oh, and I forgot to point out, too, as a reminder before the class started, if you look in the handout section 
on the, the GoToWebinar panel, you'll see two documents there. You'll see the, um, the Word document that follows along with the class, and you'll also see the PowerPoint uh, file. So you can print those out um, if you'd like to keep those for your, for your uh, if you have some type of a, <laughs> a training notebook going or something, you can print those out and add them. Uh, still not seeing any questions. Okay, okay I, why don't we go ahead and, uh, and end the session for today. I want to thank you guys all for joining us uh, for this. We'll be ha holding some more sessions during the year, so I hope to, that you'll join us then. Um, and have a, great, have a great rest of your day.